This video shows how to build a table uh, using for loops and also inserting um, JSON objects into a JSON array uh, without using the function node. The reason that uh, we wanted to do this is because uh, both looping and also working with uh, JSON objects are two things that often users um, don't know how to do without using the function node, uh, which actually uh, gets complex as you use it more. So what we'll show here is there are simple ways to accomplish those tasks without using a function node. So if I go to the flow here, uh, what I'm doing, the example here is that I'm requesting uh, temperatures uh, from a uh, online camera uh, using the API. And I do that six times through a loop. Then I display the temperature uh, plus time um, uh, using a table element. The two um, nodes that you need uh, in this particular example, uh, one of them is the node red contrib loop processing node. Um, you can install this using the um, palette manager. And you get three nodes um, uh, through this, uh, this node. One of them is the counter loop, which is like a for loop. Uh, the second one is an array loop, uh, which uh, enables you to loop through an array. And the third one is a while loop, uh, which is just a while loop. In this example, we're gonna go, only going to show the counter loop. But the principles are the same for the other two. The second node you need is the node red node UI table. This allows you to build a table that looks like this. And you can actually get uh, pretty fancy uh, with formatting the table. And the data structure that goes into the uh, table node uh, has to be a list of JSON objects. So we'll show how to create uh, this list of JSON objects without using a function node. So if I go back to here, the main uh, uh, subflow we're going to look at, this is, what, is this one called request temp. I double click and go into the subflow. You can already see that there is a loop here. What the loop does is that um, it um, sends a HTTP request uh, with a particular uh, request every time. And then when it gets back the temperature data, uh, this particular node, the, the change node, parses the data. Then it adds that data, which is a JSON uh, object, into a JSON array here. And once the loop satisfies this condition, uh, it exits through this path here. Um, and then we send the data forward to the table. So this loop control is a uh, counter loop. And you can set uh, the counter variable. Uh, in this case, I use message.count. And I initialize the count variable to 0. And I terminate when the count variable uh, reaches to 6. So it increments from zero to five, then it terminates at six. And here you can also change the increment number. Uh, this one is just for formatting the API that's used to grab temperature data. And the reason that I need a loop is because inside API, um, the API needs to change with this uh, count number. So this is how I, uh, format API to grab those uh, temperature. And this HTTP request simply goes to the um, uh, web address um, to grab the temperature data uh, through the API that I formatted. So now the next one is parse data. Once I get that temperature data, what I wanted to do is I wanted to put it into a JSON object. And what I call that uh, a variable message.obj. So in message.obj, I created three fields, a spot, 
which is basically the ID uh, of the uh, temperature spot. Uh, and that's equivalent to count plus one. And the second um, property in the message.obj is the, uh, uh, the temperature. So this uh, payload dot uh, value t is the temperature I receive from my API. So I saved into obj dot uh, value, value t here. And the third uh, property in the uh, JSON object is the time. And I formatted it using a particular time format uh, based on the JSON nata, um, uh, JSON nata expression. So JSONATA is very useful. Um, it is this particular uh, element here because you can use it to format your data or your JSON object or your JSON array uh, into pretty much anything you want. It is very convenient to use uh, when you need to work with uh, data and you don't want it to use a functional. Um, so you can use that to pretty much work uh, with your data. So this particular uh, block creates a JSON object. Um, that's the JSON object I wanted to put into the table. Now, you know, th this creates that JSON object that's basically one row in the table. And over the loop, I'm going to have six of such objects. So I have to put that into a uh, variable. I call it message.data. Uh, I basically append the object that I, I just got uh, into message.data. Um, and uh, then I delete the message.object because uh, every time when it loops through, um, I will save a new message.object. So I just delete it here to make sure that I don't have any issues. Um, I think here, even if you don't delete it, um, it's not a problem. So this one basically, every time it loops through, it adds a JSON object um, to the JSON array here. And once the loop exits, what I do is that I set um, uh, message.payload to message.data. Mm, this way, the message.payload gets sent to the table element. Um, I think a better thing to do is probably do move, uh, move message.data to message.payload. Because when you do this, uh, essentially you are also deleting the message.data um, after you move it to message.payload, which is better, um, but it's not critical. So now uh, if I go back to this, um, once I exit out of the loop, um, it's going to send the uh, JSON array to the temp table. So basically then when you, when you click the button, uh, you will get uh, this table displayed uh, here. And the comment that I want to make is basically um, you can indeed work on loops and JSON objects uh, without using the function element, uh, function node. And uh, this can not only simplify the debugging, but also visually uh, it's, it's much easier uh, to follow. Uh, so this is the recommended way of working with loops and uh, JSON objects.